Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube land. And good morning to my sister, Adrienne, who is in the virtual room with me. <laughs> Although we are uh, a few kilometers apart, I would say, <laughs> in reality. Anyway, um, we are here in the study room and welcome into the study room for, oh, I got the wrong book in my hand, um, for praising God through prayer and worship. Um, we are just studying this along uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, my sister and I, and um, we had a little few issues in other studies we did before about me dropping certain lessons or losing certain videos. So um, I've come upon this as a format for posterity. So whoever's watching this in future times, you can understand that's what we're doing. So Today we are on page 30. We are doing day four of week two, which I am labeling as number 11, because that's what it is. All right, so today I uh, also want to uh, point out that we are reading Psalm 13 and Psalm 14, and then we're going to go to Romans 3 verses 10 to 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as usual, put the link for those Bible references in the, sorry, come on lips, in the description box below. And that way you'll be able to pop that open and view that on your computer if you like, or print it out because I'm using the print format for those. At any rate, we need to start with prayer because we rely. Oh, and I wanted to say the date as well. It's Monday. June the 28th, 2021, correct? Yes. Okay, good. So you need to have your uh, tools at hand, your marking pens and pencils, your Bible, your notebook, and the workbook. All right, let's go to prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the, uh, the day of worship which you gave us yesterday where some of us were able to meet with our congregations and to hear our pastors preach in person again here in Canada. And we're very grateful for that. We would like to intercede with you, Father, to, um, to uh, I don't know how to say this, but open or raise your mighty hand on behalf of your beloved who are, have been uh, fined, persecuted, and imprisoned for preaching the gospel and for holding church to uh to minister to your people there and we ask for your protection on others who who are uh, ready to step out in faith and uh to open their churches and father god we know that the church of god is never closed we know that you inhabit the praises of your people and that your people are those who have your holy spirit living within them, guiding them and directing them, teaching them all things out of the scriptures according to your plan. And so, Father God, today, as we're trusting you for all of those things, we're also trusting you to lead us into your truth and make it practical. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that sounded like a little uh, computer glitch, but uh, we're not going to fuss about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the internet goes funny, and um, that's what happens with certain recordings. We can't help that. That's not our um, responsibility. However, Adrienne and I were discussing today that if you use certain browsers, such as Chrome, um, I'm not sure about the other ones, but I do know Chrome uses a lot of your computer resources. And so if you are ever in a meeting, um, you need to close your browsers and uh, yeah, and just use your voice over internet protocol um, as the basis. Okay, so here we are, day four. I'm going to read the destructions. And you know, the one thing I, the, did I say destructions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a day today. It's very hot and buggy where we are. We've had some rain, but it, uh, now it's turned really hot and so all of that humidity that went into the earth is now coming out into the air again um where we live in sunny southwestern ontario the banana belt of canada and uh, you might see my little kitties popping in with their little black and 
orange tails. So <laughs> don't let that distract you. Okay, I'm going to read. Sorry for the distraction. Read Psalm 13 today, again, marking references to God. Also, okay, we've got some new things. Rejoice and key repeated phrases that reveal the main idea of this psalm. Okay, so before we do that, we're of course going to read through it in its oh, don't have your Bible in its entirety, um, as if we've never read it before or marked it. So we are on Psalm 13. I, while you're doing that, Adrian, I gotta find my glasses. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, go ahead. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all the day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. But I have entrusted, I have, but I, oh my, but I have trusted in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Very good. That's, that's it. So we see in this Psalm, some of the keywords that we've already looked at. Uh, we see sing and we see the word, did we mark before loving kindness or was that just me that does that? Hold on. I have to look and see if I, yeah, I marked it the same as, yeah, I marked it. Okay. And of course, we see some time references, which indicate um, the state of mind of the of the psalmist. Okay, we you didn't tell me who wrote this. For the choir director, a psalm of David. So this is a song to be sung by the choir. So oftentimes, um, if you go to a church gathering, whatever the songs and anthems that the choir sings are not necessarily the same things that the people <coughs> in the congregation sing. So, um, so that's the indication anyway, that this is for the choir director. Teach this one to the choir for next Sunday. Okay, so we are marking, and I told everybody to get their pens ready, and I, had to make space on my desk. Okay. All right. So we're going to mark, what do we say? Lord God. Oh, rejoice. How are we going to mark that? I, I just put a box around it in purple. Did you? Okay. I mark a big smiley through it. You know, the smiley that goes like this and has the little cheeky things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I do. You can, you people out there in YouTube land, find what works best for you, but make it consistent throughout your whole Bible and especially through this study of the Psalms. So however you mark it, put it down on your bookmark or if you're using a New American Standard Study Bible, put it in the concordance in the back so that you can refer back and say, how did I mark that? And then you'll find the answer quickly. All right. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. How long, O oh Lord, Lord, will you, mm -hmm. excuse me, forget me? Are you marking the uh, author as well? Yes. Okay, that's Forever. Easy. Okay. Yeah, I'm marking the author as well. How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my, oh my goodness, heart all the day? So How long will my... So excuse me, there's, there's a lot of time references in here. The question is how long, how long? So that's a time reference. Oh, and it then, is, yes. And then we had uh, forever, and then we have all the day. I just put a big clock in the corner. Enemy. Yeah. I'm marking that because. Oh, because we have before. Okay. How did I do that? Oh, yeah. I just. Don't. 
be exalted over me. Mm -hmm. Consider and answer me. Oh, Lord, my God, enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy, oh, enemy. Will say, I, the enemy, yes. I get that confused sometimes. Have overcome him. That is, him is the author. Yes. But I have. I hope you froze, Adrian. Have trusted in your uh, loving kindness. And I mark loving kindness underlined with a heart through it. My heart shall, here's that rejoice word. Sorry, Adrienne is out of commission. I hope it's her and not me. Uh, well, I don't hope it's her. I just hope that it's not me um, for this. So rejoice. So I just make a little happy thing in there. In your, there you came back. That's weird. My, my internet didn't even go down. Oh, you did though. Okay, so I'm just finishing up uh, verse five. Okay. Yeah, my uh, just let me figure. It. Just give me a second. So oh, hang on a second because uh, you dropped out and I continued on. So we're also marking salvation in a particular way. Oh, I don't remember how I marked it. So I'm marking that and loving kindness. We also make note of that. Uh, we're not going to talk about. OK, so sometimes we are um, picking up these things because it's a theme throughout the whole collection of Psalms. But we're not necessarily talking about that today or in this yes. particular study. So, you know, I mean, um, I have mentioned this before, but for seven years, I read five Psalms and one proverb every day of the, every day of the week. And when you do that, you, you really get to know what's in there. Um, I have to start doing that again, because that was a very good habit. And somebody told me a long time ago that uh, while Billy Graham was alive, that's what he did every day, five Psalms and a proverb. So, okay, you are going to. Oh, that internet is bad again, Adrian. You know, it could not be mine. It's not mine. It isn't? I don't know what's no, happening. Mine's fine. No, no, but I, I'm saying when in the recording it's turning out bad. Um, and I don't know if it's mine because I can't hear my part. But yeah, there you are, frozen again. Okay, it's all right. Now here we are again and i don't know how you people marked it but here it is again i will sing okay um okay so verse five says but i have trusted in your loving kindness my heart shall rejoice and there's that word in your that's god's salvation i will sing now uh, in my Bible, beside every because I'm a singer <laughs> and a musician, every time I find a reference to music, I have stickers. I have music stickers from my uh, teaching studio. And so I put a, oops, I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, oh, oh. See that nice, bright, shiny sticker? I put it in there. There it is. Uh, you don't have to do that. I just did it because I've been through the Psalms so many times that I... I like to change up how I've done it. Okay, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Okay, that's the end of uh, Psalm 13. Um, my enemy, my arrows, but uh, yeah, I have trusted you, loving. Okay, I guess that's it.
All right, so now, so here's something else that's going on in the world, everybody, that, uh, you know, um, we have solar activities going on in the universe and those solar, solar, um, the solar activity also might give off uh, electromagnetic impulses, which interfere with everybody's internet. So don't be surprised. All right. Um, okay, so what it, it's asking us to do some inductive study here. It says, ask and answer as many of the five W's and an H as you can. So what are those, Adrian? Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Who, what, where, when, high, and when? <laughs> you did that fast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my lips together to say it fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay, so who, who, all right, so I'm going to ask the questions. <laughs> so, What is the psalmist's problem in the beginning? What is his feeling? Verse one. Yeah, abandonment. Yeah. How long will you forget? Yeah. Have you forgotten me forever? How long will you hide your face? That's right, you're frozen again. So he, he is feeling abandoned and forsaken by God. And what else is going on in verse two? He says he has sorrow in his heart all day long. That's what's happening. He's, he's having sorrow in his heart all day. And then it says, you disappeared again, but you're back. Um, how long, and then he says, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? So what's the problem? The enemy is, is ruling over him and he doesn't like it. Yeah. It's giving him sorrow. Yes. And he feels abandoned by God. Okay. All right. So, so then in the next segment, and uh, we've mentioned this before in our study Bibles, our new American standard study Bibles. Um, the segments are not only separated by white space, like a paragraph or a carriage return, whatever you call it, but it's also started with a bold number. So our bold numbers go from one and two, and then from three and four, and then five and six. So in this middle section, what's happening here? He wants the Lord to consider what he's saying and answer him. Yes, he's, he's feeling abandoned and he wants an answer from the Lord, doesn't he? And what does he, what does, how desperate is he? He, he's, a, he's desperate. Oh, this interconnect connections. I, I didn't hear any of that. Sorry. The sleep, the sleep of death, which is yeah. suicide. Well, I don't know whether, I don't know whether it's suicide, but he feels like he's going to die. He feels like he's going to die if God doesn't uh, show him what's happening. Enlighten my eyes. Show me what's going on. And he's afraid that if God doesn't come and show him what's going on, what's going to happen concerning the enemy? He will overcome him. Yes. And I found another word here. And, the, and my adversaries will... Was he, what does he think that the adversaries are going to do while he's shaken? Rejoice. Yeah. So. Yeah. The adversaries will rejoice. Okay. So now there is a turning point and what introduces the turning point? What is, what is the part of speech? It shows the contrast. Uh, uh, sing to the Lord. Before that. No, my heart shall rejoice. Before that, before that, there's a connecting word. But. Yes, okay. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, the conjunction is but. 
but I have done what? Trusted. And yeah, what is he trusted in? His loving, God's loving kindness. Yes. Did he trust in his armies? No. Did he trust in his counselors? No. Did he trust in his uh, government? <laughs> no. Did he trust in himself? No. No, he trusted in God's loving kindness. And you answered that. And so there are three short parts to this. Each of them in the English. Oh, no, not the first one. First one has a little bit more. Um, so he starts out with a problem and then he changes his mind. And what is his mind uh, going towards now? Rejoicing in God's salvation. Yes, trusting in God and rejoicing in God's salvation. Um, do you think he has seen it at this point in the psalm? Probably not. Probably not, no. Um, no. But he is declaring it. He's going to trust. I shall. That's a determination he made. I shall rejoice in your salvation. And then um, uh, what's he going to do? Sing to the Lord. Oh, there. Now there's a strategy. I, I, uh, I'm going to be facetious here a minute. You've never felt abandoned by God. Oh, yeah, or right. That, or that he, yeah. So that's like facetiousness. So when we see this psalm, and I'm sure nobody out there in YouTube land has ever felt abandoned by God and that he wasn't listening and that they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. That's facetious. We all have. And uh, what is David's determination, even though he feels that way? To rejoice and be glad that God saved him. Yes. And so he's going to, he knows that God saves. That's what he knows about God, right? And so he's going to sing to the Lord. Why? Why? Because God has dealt bountifully with him. Yes. Okay. So the strategy, and I have to tell you, I'm a singer. And this is sometimes when you're in that rock and hard place, this is a hard thing to do. What is the remedy that God gave him? The strategy to turn his heart around. singing yes i will sing to the lord surely in this day and age here we are 2021 we have so many songs that have been written throughout the ages up to the present time where we can choose to sing to the lord we can sing to the lord um and so that is a strategy. So for some, it'll be plugging in headphones, uh, blocking out the world, put in your earbuds and uh, listen to your favorite praise and worship songs. Or it might be, you know, putting on some hymns from old fashioned days. And you can find a whole playlist of that or many playlists of that on the Internet nowadays of old hymns that uh, tell timeless truths and sing praises to the Lord. So that's a very good strategy. All right. The question here, it was, do you then, okay, so that's all we've discussed, but think about yourself. Do you cry out to God with the same passion as this, as this uh, adverse, as this psalmist? And, um, Here's what I read through these Psalms so many times, so many times, and then it got to where I was reading them out loud. And I've said this before, reading out loud is a very good learning strategy. But when you read it out loud, you, instead of just intellectually thinking about it, you are actually praying that prayer out loud to God, the same one that the Psalmist prayed. And that also is a very good strategy. Mental health, spiritual health. <laughs> okay and the question was do you trust him the way david did well i'm just going to leave that hanging in the air because 
those are self-examination uh, things. You just winked out and in again, Adrian. My internet connection was unstable. I know, is that, it's weird. Okay, We're, now we are going to go to Psalm 14, which is the next one. Who's it written for? For the choir director. Ooh okay, what is it? A Psalm of David. Okay, so we're going to read through just as if it's the very first time. The fool has said in his heart. Oh dear, Adrian, you're you're there is no God. Okay. They are corrupt. They have committed. Yeah, I can't. No, you're waking out too much, so I'm going to read it. Sorry. Sorry, people out there in YouTube land. Okay. Okay. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've committed abominable deeds. There's no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. They have together, together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of wickedness not know who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great dread, for God is with the righteous generation. You would put to shame the counsel of the afflicted, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his captive people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Okay, so this is written by the psalmist. And I just want to point out that this is past, this in, in the timeline. This is, this is uh, the time of Israel's being captive where is it? Moses. Well, we have to put that in timeline. Um, when they, when the children of Israel were cap, oh, gosh, why is my brain doing this to me today? Thankfully, this study Bible has timelines in it that we can use. <laughs> History of Israel. See, I'm terrible. Kings of Israel. Kings of Israel, pharaohs of Egypt. Yes, so so David is before Egypt. Is that right? Why am I just blanking here? Okay, you people out in YouTube land are much smarter than me. And uh, maybe I better drink some more coffee. <laughs> anyway, so there are yet... Um, uh, many captivities that Israel is going to be taken into, historically speaking, um, but when he, when David is reading this. Okay. Let's look at the question. Oh, let's go back and we'll read it according to uh, our marking. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I'm sorry, Adrian, <laughs> that internet is just too bad. Okay. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Corrupt, I mark that as iniquity, sin. They have committed abominable deeds. So those abominable deeds are sin. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all done what? Turned aside. Together they have, and I'm going to box uh, the same way as I do for sin, become corrupt. There's no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of wickedness, and I box that, not know who, that's those workers of wickedness, Eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord. There they, and I didn't mark that one before, they, those workers of wickedness, are in great dread. 
for God is with the righteous generation. Now we marked righteous in a particular way. Go back to your cards where you marked it and look at how you did that and the righteous generation. So I'm going to mark righteous. Okay, so there, there they are in great dread for God is with the righteous generations. You, I'm talking about the wicked there, would put to shame the counsel of the afflicted, but the Lord is his refuge. And again, I mark that with a, with a roof. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. And I mark salvation in a particular way. So there it is. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores his captive people. Jacob will, oh, there's our word. Jacob will, what pen was I using? Am I my post? Where did it go? There it is. Jacob will rejoice. Israel would be glad. You know what? I think glad and rejoice. I'm going to mark them the same way with my little smiley face. Okay, so here we are going back here. All right, we're marking. Oh, also mark references to the nation Israel. And then it says also mark fool but don't add it to your bookmark. I have a silly way of marking fool. So uh, whatever you do, <laughs> you could put like a dunce cap. You could put a little goofy person. You could mark it just in a color. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's, it's your, it's your marking and you need to, uh, I, um, personalize it to yourself. Okay. Um, keyword Israel. Now I tend to mark that with the star, that five pointed star. Okay, so everybody, just let go of that controversy, shall we, about Israel and the star of David? Just let it go. It's a good symbol for me to mark in my Bible so that I can see what I can see. Okay, so where would did we find Israel? We found that in. Um, verse seven at right at the very end oh the salvation of israel and that's how i mark it i mark it in blue a six-pointed star would come out of zion now that's another thing i mark but you don't have to jacob will rejoice israel there it is will be glad all right Mark fool, but don't mark, add it to your bookmark. It's used only in a few more Psalms. Although we did the first, one of the first studies that we did that we did not, we didn't record. Did we record foolproofing your life? Yes. Okay. So that can, you can find that in another playlist. We did that in 2020, I believe. Foolproofing your life. We did not, we did not record the first two studies because I wasn't confident to do that. And we are learning as we go. So if you look in the date time when, the, when these things are recorded, you see, I hope that you see that we get progressively better at the technology. <laughs> That's the goal at any rate. Okay. Um, what did we say? Okay. So, Okay, now we're supposed to compare verses 1 to 3 with Romans 3, 10 to 12. So I'm going back there in my Bible. And Adrienne and I have studied this. We studied this, started this, the study of Romans in, when did we start that? February? March? January of this year, 2021? <clears throat> anyway, our goal with that is to complete the entire study of the book of Romans. We are only in part two of four parts there. You can jump in there too, if you like. Um, where am I? Uh, for chapter three, verses 10 and 11. That's where we're going. And that says, oh, I'm going to start at verse nine. It says, oh my goodness. This is talking about the righteousness of God as shown in the law. 
and contrasted it with faith, righteous and unrighteous. But at verse nine, it says, what then are we better than they? And that's speaking of Jews and Gentiles. Not at all, for we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. As it is written, and here it is, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good, not even one. And were we to go on farther? So that's 2 verse 12. So in Romans chapter 2, in that passage, the Apostle Paul is quoting what we just read in Psalm 14. All right. So uh, the question was, what did you learn by comparing? What do we learn by comparing those? I'm afraid of my internet now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, well, just talk and I'll, I'll just uh, cover for you if it conks out. Um, the, is anybody considered righteous? No. No. We learned that in Romans. We learned that in depth in Romans. We keep learning that more and more in depth in Romans. So, in God's view, there's no such thing for us as self-righteousness. No. So the psalm, and there's no such thing as self-justification. We cannot justify ourselves to make ourselves right with God. We learned that that's only through Jesus Christ and through accepting that gift. Okay. So the psalmist is in 14. He's thrown up his hands, basically. Nobody. There's nobody who does what's right. Nobody who understands. Everyone has turned aside. They've become corrupt. So what is the problem he has in verse four? In Yeah, in verse four there. Um. Uh. That the word, yeah, I'm confused. Well, what is going on? What does he see? There is no one good, but he said, it's a question. Do all do all the workers of wickedness not know who eat up my people as they eat bread? Yeah. So he is looking at these wicked people and they're doing bad things to his people. Eat up my people as they eat bread. Well, that's a pretty visual po poetic language. It's not that they were cannibals. This is a poetic book and it's a poetic, uh, this is a song. So he's saying the, 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 in a poetic sense, the way that his people are being treated is just like people are eating up bread, just gobble it up, right? And what, what else is, going on what what are what else about these workers of iniquity uh, they don't call upon the lord you know, we mark that down in a certain way call is is a uh, call upon his prayer call upon what do we learn about god in here in verse five um is God is with the righteous generation. So who is the righteous generation? The Jews. In in his in in the in all of history, knowing what we know from Romans, who is the righteous generation? There isn't one. It's whoever calls upon the Lord. Right. Okay. Because the wicked are not calling upon the Lord. So the righteous generation are looking to God. And because they're looking to God, they're looking to, to walk in his ways, walk, behave in, in the way he. So the righteous generation are the ones who are seeking after God. Now he's just said no one does. So this is a big conundrum here, right? 
And what do we see? Um, what do we see as happening in verse six? He puts the shame, puts to shame the counsel of the afflicted. So the afflicted are the people who are being criticized, condemned, persecuted, slandered by the wicked who have turned aside and who are corrupt and who do not call upon God. But what about, so they're put, those people are trying to put to shame the advice, the counsel, the advice of the afflicted or the, they're trying to, they're trying to shame them. Mm -hmm. But what do we know? But God. But, yeah, God is a refuge. Yes. Um, you're going to find as you study more and more that you're going to see a lot of but gods or but the lord or you know what i mean yeah those are the things that you can you can those are things you can also write down in your tent pegs of faith book this is what god does so god the lord is he is the is the the refuge to the afflicted good all right, so now um, in the book, it said, what is David's hope? In David's time, Israel wasn't in captivity, right? So what do you think when the Lord restores his captive people refers to? Captive to sin. They've fallen away from God, so they, they're trapped in their own sinful desires. Good. There's another aspect, too, that we, we don't really talk about too much, but um, the Psalms are also prophetic works. So think about that. How many years between David and the appearance of Christ? And then his apostle Paul. So remember, we already looked at that the apostle Paul quoted this psalm in his, in his writing to the Romans, to the Roman believers. So in the interim between David, and I'm glad that this text just referred to that, because remember, I was casting about in my mind the Bible knowledge that was escaping me. <laughs> <laughs> um thank you Kay. thank you lord <laughs> anyway um <clears throat> the the i'm going back to it again so there, a lot of time has passed between david and the appearance of christ on, in history and then the apostle paul referring back to this psalm so what we're getting here and is an understanding that that is a prophetic psalm it's a prophetic word because to that point israel had not been in captivity they had not gone to egypt and needed moses to take them out and they had not gone to babylon where um, various of the prophets and daniel and all of those people were in captivity nor later on yet um so he is saying oh that salvation of israel would come out of zion so he's he's speaking about physical times actual times prophetic times that are yet to come but even yet more to come because um christ came to earth to bring salvation and so we see that, that there's a future time that he's referring to in a future, future time. And yet, it could be yet future as well, because we're still awaiting the imminent return of our Lord. Who will restore his captive people. Um, we know that... Um, That there are many people, have been many people since Christ came who have rejected him. But oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. Well, it already has. Christ came. He paid the propitiation for our sins. 
We learn that in Romans and elsewhere. And in that time, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Okay. The theme of Psalms 13 and of Psalm 14. In Psalm 13, what will we say? A song feeling abandoned? A song of abandonment. Is that 13? Oh, wait a minute. That's 13. A song of abandonment and salvation. Because, right? Where's my pencil? Okay, Psalm 13. Uh, that's just what I've said. Okay, you can choose whatever you want. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> Because the Holy Spirit teaches us all a song of abandonment and salvation. That's what I'm writing down. Okay. Uh, in Psalm 14, what do we see? It's a song again. Um, I'm not sure. <coughs> okay, this is a, a song of no, I don't want to say captivity. Captivity by the wicked. Hope for salvation. A uh, song of hope for salvation. From the wicked. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so too. Anyway, uh, I wrote mine in pencil in case I want to change it. Because <laughs> I'm just that way. Okay, so we've gone through. We've been almost an hour here in this study, and it looks like your internet is restored again. Yes, it is, actually. That would not be good if you were doing another class either, would it? No, it would not. Okay, so everyone, we're in praising God through prayer and worship. We've just finished day four of, <coughs> of um, week two. We have day five and day six. That will be on, for us, Adrian. that will be Wednesday and then Friday. And then there's a day seven, uh, which is uh, <coughs> a weekend study. And it's got a lot of thoughts for the week and uh, different things. And so I, I started uh, recording those on my own so that um, I can't record discussion. <laughs> but... Um, I can re record what's there and uh, for everybody to think about over the weekend. So that's what the process is going to be, God willing. And the Greeks don't rise. And uh, we will see you here uh, next time. For us, it'll be Wednesday. For you, it'll be whatever day you pop in. And you're most welcome to do that. So let's close in prayer and then we'll go about the day. Oh, Lord. We know that we can cry out to you just as David the psalmist did in hope of salvation, because yes, you have already brought salvation for all who believe. As it says in Romans, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. The just shall live by faith. And Father God, we, we trust you um, even when we see these troubling things that affect us. And if they don't affect us directly, they, they affect us. The knowledge of the wickedness in the world affects us. And we cry out against it. And so, Father God, I'm glad for your hedge of protection, which is around your, your, um, your believers, your chosen ones so that um, we, will, uh, we will be able to participate and to see you working out our salvation 
and to work out the purpose, your purpose, which you had for us even before the foundation of the world. And I'm just asking, Lord, that that you use this study on the internet to draw many people to your side. I have no idea. I have no idea when or where, how or why uh, people might be watching our study here together. But Lord, I pray that you use it however you will, to give people hunger and thirst for your world, word so that they know you better and that they come to faith in you. Call your beloved ones out of darkness into light. Dear Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, so we'll see you next time. I see that Adrian has winked out again uh, while I was praying, and I just uh, ask that you be blessed. You are loved. See you next time.